Capital of Ibiza now on BBC Two. The clubbers, the dealers and the disturbing consequences in the final part of Drugland, which contains strong language and scenes of drug abuse from the start. Ibiza's famous in the whole wide world for drugs. It can't be stopped. It's that, that widespread. Get your MDMA, Coca pills, a GBA, a GM, a GHB. You've got to be careful there. There's like police and stuff. Yeah, obviously, you're supposed to just have the gangs fighting their players. You're not fucking gangs, you know what As long as people want drugs, there will always be dealers. Since the major English nightclubs opened for business in Ibiza in the late 80s, the White Island has become the dream destination for Britain's young clubbing fraternity. But a heady cocktail of drugs, clubs and sunshine mixed with vast numbers of pill-popping tourists has also transformed the island into a dealer's paradise. They're going to buy them anyway of somebody, so why do they buy them of me? Some of the dealers in this film agreed to be interviewed only if their identity was concealed. In order to reveal the workings of this vast business, we agreed. It would raise some money. All the money's out there, it's just who collects it. Because it's allowed, well, it's, it's not allowed officially, but it is unofficially. <laughs> This is paradise. Paradise for drugs, sex, music, whatever you want. This is part of the tourism. It's part of the system. The dealers are all here. From the biggest one of all that comes here to play with his balls, to the smallest one of them, they are all here. Everyone has a step on the ladder. They have everything. Everything is controlled. Since a quarter of a million young British clubbers have been descending on Ibiza in recent summers, San Antonio has been changing. What was once home to the lager louts and party girls has now become the playground for a growing population of drug tourists. We sent an undercover team into the heart of the West End to see just how easy it's now become to buy drugs from the street. Immediately, we found that the public relations workers who run drinks promotions for the bars provide a rather handy information and advice service. The street is a business, a business. You have to check it out. These people are normally young, 
and come here on holiday for one, two, three months. They start selling tickets, and well, if they can sell a pill or make some money, then they'll sell them. It wasn't long before we stumbled upon a PR girl who wanted our business. She knew exactly how to promote her bar to everyday tourists like us. Yeah, but you must buy the drink too to get a drink for it. The PR girl was guiding us to the dealer, but she wasn't going to miss an opportunity to make a few euros for herself along the way. The drinks promotion would earn her commission, on top of which the going rate for delivering custom to a dealer is 10 euros a time. Yeah, you've got a drink, you've got a drink, yeah? Yeah. The guy's not even got your drink, and you're, he's stealing new drugs from the terrace, and the police see that, you're fucked. Alright. Do you know what I mean? You can leave the house without drugs and, and find them within, within a minute on the street. It's, it's that easy. You can walk in and just ask for drugs from behind the bar, and they'll show you drugs now, it's a pint of the bar. Right? It appears our luck was out, that Charlie had all run dry. But there was an alternative on the menu, as provided by the helpful young man behind the bar. MDMA crystals are a powerful form of ecstasy that's sold in small bags of white powder. Clubbers dab the crystals on their tongue to induce an overwhelming, loved-up effect. While our transaction was underway, we were approached by the table waiter who offered us some cocaine while we relaxed with our drinks. Just getting some MDMA at the moment. We were keen to find out just how organised this drug dealing operation was. We don't want to piss off the management. Where did she get this from? She gave it from us. So you worked together? Yeah, yeah. Got you, got you, got you. What is that? Good holiday, yeah? MDA customs. You're clean as fuck. Like, you won't get to come down the next day or nothing. tablets and alcohol. The biggest drug in Ibiza who causes most of the problems is ecstasy, and ecstasy is related drugs. Just sit down, please. Do you take any drug or alcohol? Uh, lots of alcohol. Any tablets? Um, no. I know the policeman is just a doctor. Did you think it was a pill? It was just in a club that we went to. We don't usually do it, but um, a guy came up and offered us, so uh, we just perfect. got one. Same. Just hit a bit too hard on the last night, I guess. First time in Ibiza? Yeah. Yeah, nice man. Yeah, yeah, apart from this. <laughs> First thing in the morning, you can have drug related accidents. Then at noon, you usually have the drowning or nearly drowning people. And then half a seven, normally some car accident and then start again from 12 o'clock till 6 in the morning. Uh, just 
get the car. I have to go to a, a mess here. There's a lot of it's 5 o'clock in the morning. I've been told that he's a 28-year-old man who has taken li liquid exercise and is having convulsions at the moment. They are not happy if we go into the disco because they don't want people in the disco see that we are treating uh, the patient. What they do is to put the patient in the back cage. What they sell is just fun and the uh, good side of life, but they don't want to see the side effects of the drugs. Well, I'm people. Crazy. people. He's not talking. He's not moving. Because he's in coma at the moment. He's in coma? Yeah, he's in coma. This man has been taking a lot of tablets. We don't know the amount. This patient has both pupils myotic, that means the pupils are diminished in size. I think it makes the GHB, the exorcist, yeah. with uh, opium derivates. Yeah, is it stronger or is it? Yeah, stronger. Is it's stronger. It's stronger than normal exorcist. As you can see, when you buy a tablet, you never know what exactly is inside this tablet. It can lead you to a very fatal end. It's a normal day. It's a normal Saturday night. In recent years, San Antonio's drug problem has reached an intolerable level. And the new chief of police has made it his mission to rid town of the drug dealers. The only danger uh, we have in Ibiza is the drugs. If we don't fight against drugs, we'll have problems with the children. It's our life and we must be very careful with it. And we'll fight as much as we can. I'm sure we'll win this war. At the front line of this new war against drugs is undercover cop Javier. He's tasked with cleaning up his own hometown, mostly of foreign drug dealers. We like to clean San Antonio, but I recognize that it's very difficult to clean San Antonio because there, is, there are many drugs and many people. It's, it's difficult to clean up San Antonio. They do in the street, they do in the bars. Sometimes they go to the apartments, the hotel. Get your empty makeup or pills. A GBA, a GM, a GHB. The one who were selling drugs, they mostly were English. Now they mostly are Senegalese. The Senegalese are known as the Lucky Luckies, street sellers who trade in sunglasses, necklaces and trinkets. But we soon learned that it was much more than just holiday memorabilia that they were willing to trade. Under Spanish law, in order to prosecute for drug trafficking, the police must catch the dealers in the act of selling. The lucky, lucky dealers clearly know this only too well. Yeah. 
After agreeing the deal, it appeared we were going to have to wait as the drugs were fetched from their stash. They know that if we find them with more than 20 pills, for example, uh, probably the judge will, say, uh, will tell it's uh, for selling and they'll be in jail. So they try to have less than this, and what we try is to take them uh, just in the moment of selling. Unfortunately for Javier, this awkward aspect of Spanish law makes it much more difficult to catch the dealers. That's uh, a fight between the cat and the mouse. <laughs> Loki, Loki, dealers never take the drugs from him. Keep the, the drugs only near by him in the country, by the storms. And it works like a team, like it's because if there is a seller here, dealer here, yeah, and he comes somebody to buy, ask him for, uh, for something and then he go and bring it. The lucky win and the police lose. Please, please. Oh, oh, oh. Please. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down in there. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit Sit down. Javier and his team have caught a lucky, lucky dealer just at the moment of selling. But the dealer appears to have been smart enough to get rid of his stash just in the nick of time. Three Senegalese, they are on the call police, so throw something here, but here it's very difficult to find nothing. If they can't find the evidence, they will have to let the dealer go. ¿Y tú qué tenías en la mano? ¿Qué has sido? ¿Qué tenías? Él lo ha dicho, mira. Luis, ¿lo ha dado? Ha dicho, mira. Luis, ¿te lo ha dado? Eh, ha dicho, no, no. ¿Cuánto? ¿Cuánto? No, ni Sí, hombre, ¿cómo que no? ¿Tú lo tenías en la mano? Ha dicho, solo mira. Y fue On this occasion, it was the police that were lucky. They found the discarded drugs. Now this is a crime. He sells it, or he tried to sell the, the house. Normally they go to jail for that. The crime is with just selling one, it's a crime. Okay? In Ibiza, if someone is caught with around 20 ecstasy pills, they'll probably only receive a small fine. That amount is regarded as personal consumption. But if someone is caught selling just a small piece of cannabis, they could face as much as three years in prison. This is what we catch in about two hours tonight. Six pieces of ecstasy. And tonight the mostly is uh, Mitsubishi. For this we cannot prove it was for selling. So it will be fine with 300 euros. A small bag of marijuana. We can think it's for selling, but we cannot prove. We cannot prove, we don't understand. We catch a Senegalese just in the moment he was selling to uh, two Italian boys. That, this person will be arrested and he can be in prison for about uh, two and a half, uh, three and a half years. About. For every dealer caught and sent to prison, there were very many more whose business remained utterly unaffected. The large traffickers won't be found here. They never show their face. The police just spend their time catching poor luckless people who are selling a few shitty pills in a car park. Oh, look, please, come on. Can you just give them? We were like, oh, huh? We're not selling them. Please shut up, okay? Please shut up. Shut up. Okay? This is the first one. This is for the man. This is for the man. No, 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 no. Don't fuck with it. I don't know. Make it easy, okay? Don't fuck with it. I don't know. I was found with 750 pills and uh, 50 grams of Charlie. I was lucky it was no more, no more than that, you know. I've never been a dealer before this happens, you know. 
but it happened here in Ibiza. Pancho is currently in Ibiza's prison, serving the last year and a half of a five-year sentence for drug trafficking. As it gets ever closer to his release date, Pancho is allowed out for the occasional weekend. A brief taste of freedom he has long come to relish. Back again. Oh. <laughs> Nice to be out. Yeah, a lovely job here, as it goes. Like many of the drug dealers in Ibiza's prison, Pancho came to the island for entirely different reasons. His is a common Ibiza story. I never came here with intention of selling drugs. I came here because I like the island. You know, I'm uh, really addict to the beach. I love, I love the sandy beaches. Ibiza is a place, you know, where you can easily start selling drugs and taking drugs because it's the style of the nightlife, you know? You have discotheques open all day long, all night long, you know? Do a party today and do a party tomorrow and do a party in the afternoon. How is people going to manage to follow all these parties? They're going to have to take drugs. You know, they're just not going to go, well, I'm Mr. Clean. I'm going to go do it without drugs and without drinks. No human being could do this. Bora Bora beach parties are where the clubbers come to relax after a hard night at it. Whatever time of day in Ibiza, there is always a party going on somewhere with an abundance of drugs to keep it moving along. Imagine me having my Charlie, you know, dancing all day long, maybe having a pill, and then I'm going, I'm going to work on Monday. How am I going to work? You know, I have to snore two big lines to start working, you know? In one day, I could 10 grams sometimes, yeah? Suddenly, you're in there. You're in between the people who are dealing and taking and doing, and suddenly you say, why should, why wouldn't I? They just end up doing it. Bora Bora is a popular place here in the Playa de Mbosa. And what they want to do is to go to as many discos as they can. The drug dealers, they know that Ibiza is a flourishing market for all that because there's plenty of clubs and there's plenty of young people who come here to spend their holidays and they want to have fun the longer they can. And they know this type of fun, you have to take any drug to, to do that. It's everywhere in the island. It was in Maradí. This is paradise. Paradise for drugs, sex, music, whatever you want. You go to the beach and have fun. She goes here, she goes there. You sell a bit here, you sell a bit there. And you live it. If you want, you can make lots and lots of money on this island. Even a normal person in the end will take drugs. In the end, they all take drugs. In an attempt to reduce the overwhelming level of drug consumption in public places, the Guardia Seville now carry out routine spot checks in problem areas on the island. Good afternoon, my name is Walter. Guardia Civil, and now this afternoon I'm going to work here at Bora Bora in Playa del Bosa. I'm going to catch people to ask them if they have drugs, okay? Walter and his colleagues have come to Bora Bora Beach to remind people of the law. For those caught in possession of drugs, they will receive a caution and a small fine. If you have drugs in your house, we can't do anything. But in in the street, you are not allowed to take it back. Pues voy a proceder a confeccionar una denuncia por tener usted una sustancia que pudiera ser cocaína. 
Youth tourism is a very important sector, and it is just as important from a numerical point of view as it is from an economic point of view. The problem is that this sector shouldn't ruin other sectors. I believe that with regards to the smaller drug consumers, if they know that there is control and that there is no tolerance towards them, then the smaller traffickers will be much more careful as well. If there isn't a clientele at the base of the pyramid, then there won't be any business either for the big consignments. The people in the tourism industry benefit directly of this traffic. They know it's a big market and they are making profit of that. They don't want to change. I don't think it's the uh, Madrid or the police fault because they they do as much as they can. But you have to go to the root of the problem, not to, to the side effects. Bueno, caballero, pues mire, esto es una copia para usted. ¿eh? Acaba usted de ser denunciado a la ley 1/92. Esto se pondrá en conocimiento de la delegación de gobierno de las Islas Baleares para que tramite el correspondiente expediente administrativo con motivo de una infracción a la ley 1/92. While LaGuardia Seville busied themselves finding passers-by with small amounts of drugs, we decided to try and buy a significantly larger amount and gauge whether their no-tolerance policy was indeed a turn-off for the dealers of Bora Bora. <laughs> Despite the Guardia Seville's clampdown, it was clearly business as usual on Bora Bora Beach. Within minutes of making our inquiries, we had lined up the purchase of 50 ecstasy pills, while in the street outside, the Guardia Seville officers were still fishing for minnows. This is a, a cigar from marijuana, okay? And uh, this is forbidden here in Spain, okay? El, el de la cocaína. Well, this person is having a brown cocaine, okay? In Spain, in the street, it's not allowed. Back in San Antonio, the local police force are stepping up their very public fight against the drug dealers. For the first time ever, they have installed a CCTV surveillance system in order to monitor the busy West End. This summer, the dealers are in trouble. The CCTV cameras are using a very sophisticated system. It goes by internet, so we need uh, just a connection. Very nice, you know, it's half, the tool very, very nice. For example, when I see oh, the black man um, selling pills, I tell to the top police on the street, I said, left of you, right of you, when they take heat. <laughs> Es un sistema, una, una tecnología muy, muy, muy buena. Para, para cada... Oh, se ha caído la puerta. El problema que aquí en Ibiza El, el ADSL es bajo. Now that the CCTV cameras are up and running, we decided to see if San Antonio's dealers were still willing to trade with us openly.
tú piensas que va a cambiar algo? You think it's going to change? I don't. I doubt it. Everyone can see the cameras. Everyone knows where they are. But do you think it will be key to making trafficking less prominent? No, I really don't think so. No, realmente no. While the police were still struggling with technology, we found no problem buying drugs in full view of the cameras. Having just bought some pills from a Cockney dealer called Vinny, we hung around chatting. He was clearly in the mood to talk business and keen to point this out to his girlfriend. We appeared to have won Vinny's confidence as he was relaxed enough to deal drugs in front of us and even pop the occasional ecstasy pill between drinks. As he became more lucid, Vinny began to reveal the inside track on dealing in San Antonio. We decided to raise the stakes and asked Vinny where he got his drugs from. We wanted to know who was his supplier. Vinny may not like the Scouts as much, but he had clearly been given a green light by them to go about his business. Whether the Scousers were running bigger things in San Antonio's West End, or just running Vinny, we would have to wait and see. I know groups that come from London, Newcastle, Liverpool, Manchester, practically from all over England. They started coming here when the big clubs opened, the massive English club parties. They've been coming since 1990, 91. They bring the drugs here in many ways. The police don't have a very tight control over customs, and the dealers can often get through customs very easily, and also by boat. They don't control the boats very well here. The island of Ibiza is situated smack bang in the middle of well-established drug trafficking routes that pass through the Mediterranean and on to southern Europe. If the smugglers' illicit cargo is not destined for Ibiza itself, they often use the island to refuel, giving Officer Carlos and the Ibiza Customs Boat Patrol a fighting chance of apprehending them. Today, we have to go to maybe to the north to control the pass of the boat and looking for maybe some boat with drugs hashi coca unfortunately for carlos if he wants to catch drug traffickers he's probably on the wrong patrol boat the ibiza customs boat patrol have failed to catch any drug traffickers for over two years we're going to check that boat I think that drug dealers, they are selling the debt to the young people. They are all the time thinking about uh, to earn money, easy money. They are killers. 
because they sell their drugs. We have to wear a weapon with them because we don't know where we can find them both. As luck would have it, the boat patrol is apprehended, as they say, a suspicious boat, and an eager Carlos leads the assault. Suspicious because a boat like this can carry a big amount of drugs. Yeah, yeah. Ah, Alfredo. papeles, pasaporte. Most of the time, they bring 1,000 kilograms or 1,100 kilograms. We have to check the inside of the boat. We can find something suspicious. Yeah. We see everything inside, down the engine. No speculantes, no drugs, no cigarettes, no Si hablan malojis, llegan aquí y el helicóptero coge a estas personas y todo drogas en agua. Y después buscan dos días en este sitio de Espalmador para más paquetes. Yo, esto pasan dos meses, yo este paquete con 30 kilos. Sí. Yo no tengo ningún. Dime, oh vale, una vez probar y después no. Despite this gentleman's dalliance with drugs in his youth, Carlos found his boat to be clean as a whistle. It's difficult and frustrating every day and every night go out and check boats and nothing happens. We can try to catch them, but there are lots of people and lots of drugs. We are just now here waiting and checking the radar. How long? Hours. Uh, seven, six, eight hours. Maybe sometime if we are waiting for something, one day, 24 hours. And nothing happened. Do you know how to use the machine gun? Yes, of course. Have you ever had to use a weapon on the, in the water? Uh, no, no. No? No. When a call does finally come through, it's all hands on deck. There is another suspicious boat. Even Carlos's unrelenting enthusiasm can't break the Ibiza Boat Patrol's two-year run of bad luck. Check that boat, but this is not the boat that we are looking for. Carlos was resigned to yet another unsuccessful mission. We need at the moment another crew. Because this boat is working just uh, 15 days per month. Now we finish, it's normal that tomorrow continue another crew. But we don't have enough people, it's very frustrating. Pues claro, y más viniendo de... Y más siendo del sur. Que se comen a diario. Sí. Muy poca gente y muy pocos medios. Pero bueno, hacemos lo que se puede. Y como lo único que se puede hacer ahora mismo es tomar una cerveza, ahí está el tío. We decided to take some of Carlos and his colleagues' frustrations to their superior at Customs Head Office in Parma. For reasons of national security, he wished to remain in the shadows. We asked him if two years without catching anyone was a satisfactory track record. Well, it, it, it depends. <laughs> uh, sometimes you are lucky and another you are not. I think that we have enough patrol boat and enough people to do our job. Obviously, uh, I would prefer to have more patrol boat and more people, but 
we have uh, those and we have to, to work with, with those people. I think that the problem is that nobody wants to come here and work with customs. It's because, because here it's very expensive to live. That is the big problem. It's true that the prices here in the Balearic Island are high, that is a, is a fact, but anyway, the life here is, is also quite good. You have a nice weather and a nice, nice beaches and... Yeah, but these are professional people who want to catch drug smugglers. Well, They're not coming for the... Well, obviously, if you want to catch a, a lot of drug, probably the best place is to be in the south of Spain. Tired and frustrated, Carlos packs his bags. Pizza, pizza, eh? Yes. Tomorrow I go on holiday. Finish one month. Throughout August, at the peak of the summer season, the entire crew go on holiday at the same time. Well, we didn't catch anybody this year with the boats. Very frustrated. The next year will be different. The next year will be better. I'm sure that we are going to catch something. Somebody has taken so many pills, so many tablets. That is the disco of Spain. We are told this man has lost his conscience. Space has had 14 collapse by drug abuse in the past three days. Usually the patient is outside. Maybe he or she has Collapse. Hola. ¿Qué ha eh, nada. Ah, ya está la cuestión de... Vale. The bouncers take out the patient to the door. They don't want to have a doctor and a nurse and a medic inside. I think it's not good for the business. They pretend and everybody is happy and is having a good time and we show the the dark side of the nightlife in Ibiza. Space is one of the most successful clubs in Ibiza. It opens in the early morning, just as the other clubs are closing, and remains open for a staggering 22 hours a day. If you come to my club, it's your responsibility how you use your time and how you do it in here. You know, you have your limitations, this crowd, normally, they are free, they are professionals, they have uh, freedom and disponibility. Of course, they used to have drugs when they are in holidays and they are in a club. But the way one uh, club operates is nothing to do with it. The club denies any responsibility. 60 or 70 percent of the patients Call it are from space. It's the worst one. We call the ambulance as often as we think any person could risk. And for the safety and for the security of the crowd, this is why we call the ambulance. I suppose we'll have more today, like that. Everybody knows where you can get the drugs and I think there's, they don't, they're not doing all they could do to solve the problem. In the entrance to the club there are controls to see if you're carrying any drugs. But people come in anyway. People put it in a packet of cigarettes, put it in their underwear, in their hat, in their shoe. There are controls, but only to a certain extent. They are watching you, but not attentively. 
How can you control a person who has one pill in the pocket and eat it? How can you, can, how can you control it? We cannot put one finger in a pocket, it is not legal. We control what we see. In case we see anything happening in the club, we have to act immediately and to stop it. And in this case, we do it. I think that the club owners should be more concerned every day about this problem. The law says that they should be especially vigilant about this. I've had meetings with club owners too, and I have asked them to make a special effort with their security systems so that they can monitor this problem. If there is abuse of drug taken in clubs, it is highly likely that the class will be very short-lived. This is why I am inclined to think that this is just something temporary, a passing trend. They know, but they close their eyes to it, because if they punish too many people, the people won't come here anymore, and the tourism would go to hell. It's all a chain, yeah? If there weren't any drugs there, people wouldn't go clubbing. It's all connected. No drugs, no clubs, no people. The restaurants will complain, the hotels will complain. All this is part of the tourism. It's part of the system. This dealer, Sean, had just sold us an ecstasy pill in the club space. He revealed he was making something in the region of 400% profit on every pill he sold. His story was typical of many young Brits who come to Ibiza hoping to make an honest living. I come out as a DJ, that's what I do. But I don't get paid enough for DJing what I do, for the amount of hours I do. And I like to have money. Who do? Yeah. I like to be comfortable, I like to be able to go out when I want, and do what I want, when I want. And I said to my girlfriend, I want to come to Ibiza, we don't want to show on the DJ rather than show on the drug dealer. Right. As it stands, I'm not going to show on the drug dealer. Sean the DJ was making serious money as Sean the dealer and he was getting his drugs at rock bottom prices which intrigued us. It suggested he was well connected to a strong source on the island. Again the drug suppliers were from Liverpool. It was becoming increasingly apparent that a gang of so-called Scousers were behind a lot of the drug dealing going on in Ibiza. And we didn't want to miss the opportunity of connecting with them ourselves. We made arrangements with Sean to buy a larger quantity of drugs from him under the ruse that we were going to do some dealing of our own. We hoped, ultimately, to get an introduction to his Liverpudlian supplies and infiltrate the upper echelons of Ibiza's drug dealing industry. Hey, Ross. How are you doing? Oh, it's a bit late calling you. Yeah. A bit late calling you. Yeah. Through Sean, we met a Liverpudlian named Ross. If he was willing to do business with us, it would surely be our route in to the Scousers' drug dealing operation. Just, I'm just wondering, did you sort out a, a ton today? Um, yeah, it's going to be a bit later on though, you know, because I'll yeah. be out all day. Me. Okay, that's uh, cool. Bird and the mates just got here, well, the mates just got here. San Antonio tiene un centro de operaciones. In San Antonio, they have the center of operations because that's where there are more English people. They come directly from England with everything very well prepared in order to do things properly. And you can just come along and get in the way by selling drugs. They won't let you. Well, so give me a ring about six-ish, what time is it now? Quarter to four. About six-ish, is that right for you? That's cooler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I'll see you in the bill anyway. Take care, man.
The deal was made. Our way in looked sure. All we had to do now was make our way back to San Antonio and wait for the phone call. Even in the short space of time the CCTV cameras have been installed, the police are already claiming a small victory. We have the cameras in San Antonio. The dealers have changed the place of uh, selling because before they had the best places for, for selling the drugs. So they have moved to another uh, place for selling drugs. As you can see outside, there is not so many people. So the business for them is, is not so good now. They're not happy with the camera, no. Recordar que entre 12, 14, 15 personas han sido detenidas por la visión de las cámaras. San Antonio's local police force are clearly pleased with the results of the new surveillance system. However, when we went out into the West End, we discovered that dealers were still operating there and right under the watchful eye of the CCTV cams. The cameras hadn't stopped the dealers completely, although they did appear to have pushed some of their trade to the edge of town. It's changing, but it's a relative change. Police are arresting people. They have arrested one, two more, three, but it doesn't change anything. Listen, it'd be nice to like, you know, have, have a little bit of a chat, see what we can do. Do you have, you know, about making some money here? Yeah. Oh, cheers, bye. The call we were waiting for from Liverpudley and Ross never did come through. He had backed out of meeting us and sent a message that we were to do all our deals through our contact, Sean. We wanted to know why. After you've done, he came back round and pulled me over. He said, listen, it's the mother boy, those two guys. Is that Phil, what, Phil Max? Yeah. He came down to me with all these two lads. Are they busy? I said, no. He says, right, I'm just going to give them back throat when they come here and fucking quiz them. This team of Scousers were clearly becoming extremely suspicious of us and even thought we may have been undercover police. Look, Phil's just giving us a call. He wants to meet us around Blackbeard. Go and see what he has to To our surprise, one of the Scousers, Phil, who had been particularly suspicious of us, had just called and asked us to meet up in a nearby pub. We went in to meet him, determined to maintain our cover. Hey, Phil. How you doing? What do you want? Wait a minute, I just want to talk to this. It's um... sort of a bit there. Yeah? It's sort of a bit there. I'm really busy, so... Yeah. Having just called us here, Phil made a rather sharp exit, telling us to do the deal with his colleague. So, um, we're probably looking, you know, I don't know, 200 at a time. Just as we were in the middle of doing business, from behind came a sharp whack. What are you talking about? Phil had returned in a rage and punched us out. What are you on about? Somehow Phil knew we were undercover. Perhaps we had got too close and he decided to issue a warning. Our investigation was over. We had learned that much of Ibiza's drug problem was of British import, as were so very many of the dealers. It was time to pack our bags and get off the island quick. But our new friends, the Scousers, had one final warning for us, just in case we were planning to stay. Personally, if I was you, I would go because there's some pretty heavy people who are over here. 
This year's old man who has been taking drugs. We don't know exactly what kind of drugs, but after one hour of resuscitation, he hasn't got pulse or spontaneous breathing, and uh, passed away. He's dead. He's dead. You yeah. have been told they have been going out and taking drugs for the last three days. It's very hard to change this mentality and it has been for too many years. And it will take time. But I think if you, you have the political um, voluntary of changing that, it can be done. If you wish to comment on or have been affected by any of the issues raised in this programme, you can visit our website at bbc.co.uk forward slash drugland. Imagine a radically different way to fight the war on drugs. A drama documentary set 10 years from now, If Drugs Were Legal, is next Wednesday at 9 on BBC Two, followed by a Newsnight debate. Meet Dunbar. It says here he had 14 grams of cocaine in his sock with a street value of 1,500 quid. Yeah. 